All right, so in this class, one of the many topics we'll be talking about is uh, social media. So, so far we've been talking about your website. But let's say in the real world, you've got uh, a restaurant or you've got your company, web design company, or you are an artist and you want people to see your paintings or you're trying to get uh, your band to, uh, to get new gigs and so forth. In the real world, you'd be advertising that, wouldn't you? You'd be on a, maybe uh, on a radio ad or TV or a billboard or just flyers or word of mouth. You know, you're advertising, you're marketing that in the real world. So we have marketing and advertising also for, uh, for us in the digital world using social media. And the great thing about social media is that we can use it totally for free. Whereas you have to pay for that radio ad. You have to pay for those flyers. Even if you don't get them big professionally done, you have to pay for the copies that you made at Kinko's or whatever. You have to pay for this stuff to be for people to see it. With social media, you don't have to pay for to create the account. You don't have to pay to use the account. You're going to spend time. Time is money, but you're going to spend time on actually doing it. But it's going to be free, and you could reach a potentially larger audience than putting flyers out all over town. So it's all about knowing how to use it, of course. So um, one of the networks we'll be talking about uh, is uh, Twitter. So if you've got your web browser here, um, go ahead and let's go to twitter.com. If you don't have your account at the moment, that's OK. We can still do this. We'll log in in just a moment. But just open up your web browser if you don't have it yet and go to twitter.com. Twitter.com. Raise your hand if you've ever heard of Twitter before, before this class. Right. Most people, if you have. Um, so Twitter has been around since I think 2006. So it's about to be 10 years old. And um, it's where a lot of uh, interesting and fun and important things happen. Um, you know, the Oscars or the Grammys and football games and uh, elections and all of this stuff happens and you find out and you connect with your friends and family and all of that but we're gonna use Twitter as a way to get more attention or fame or importance for our online presence so I've got a website victorsart.info and the goal of my site is that I wanna sell my artwork so I, I might have a really great WordPress site great plugins really designed well ready to sell and everything but no one knows about my site no one comes to my site so I can't sell anything if I've got Twitter and I start to build an audience I could tweet out saying you know sail this Saturday on this painting use this coupon and the only way you can get that coupon is on Twitter mm -hmm. so that gives an incentive to people I wanna follow his Twitter account because he's gonna give out stuff on his Twitter account or maybe he's posting his pictures they're cool and inspirational I want to follow that, I want to share that. So there's different reasons why we want to be on social media. And the big one is we want to get an audience, we want to find an audience, get an audience, and keep an audience. Uh, so if you go to twitter.com here, um, I'm getting just this little slideshow happening in the background of pictures and then text at the bottom left, those are tweets. Does anyone see a different kind of Twitter home screen with uh, like more tweets or more options and, and so forth? I have not logged in, uh, but what I mean is Twitter is changing things a little bit. For people that don't have a Twitter address, they can go to twitter.com and still use Twitter. For a long time, you couldn't really use Twitter until you created an account. And very recently, like this week, they've started to change it so that people that don't have Twitter can still use Twitter. And then that'll entice them to sign up for a Twitter account. So if you see a different screen with actually more tweets and chat and stuff, then you've got the new version of Twitter. I, I don't hear, but I do have an account. So if you have not created an account yet, you might want to take a moment to do that, but I would watch the videos first so that you get some advice on how to do that. If you don't have your account, just follow along for the moment. But uh, go ahead and log in with your Twitter account.
All right, so I've logged into this account that I have. Um, it's for school stuff, and uh, it might look a little different than yours because I maybe customized it a little bit. Uh, my background might be a little bit different. Watch the videos on th those tell you how to customize your, your Twitter and so forth. I want to talk more about how to use it. So the details about how to put your own picture and background and all that, watch the videos. But I want to tell you how to use it because there's lots of uh, tips and advice that I want to give you on that. So just to, just to see here, just to kind of get a sense of things, uh, as soon as I logged in, you should know here at the top left I've got these four uh, menu items. I've got the home screen where I see all of my tweets and also the tweets of those that I follow. I've got notifications in case someone follows me, someone tweets at me, someone retweets me and so forth. Messages are like private messages where I can tweet to, to people privately, only, only us will see it, not the whole world, because by default all your tweets are public. And then discover tab, which is to connect with more accounts. So in the beginning, when you first create a, a, uh, a Twitter account, uh, you have zero tweets, you have zero followers, and you have zero following. So the terminology of that is pretty straightforward. Tweets are the number of little messages that you put out into Twitter. You've got following, which are the Twitter accounts of the world that you are following, that you've chosen to follow. So when they tweet something new, you might see it. Then you've got followers, which is the opposite. People out in there in the world that thought you were interesting enough to follow you so that when you tweet something, they might see it. That's the whole point of getting likes on Facebook, getting followers on Twitter, getting plus ones on Google+, getting favorites on Instagram. You want an audience. You want people that care about whenever you tweet something or post something, they will do something about it. Not just see your cool picture, but actually buy your product or subscribe to your newsletter or see more of your, of your paintings, or read your stories. So that's why we want to build followers, or likes, and so forth. We want an audience. That's obviously easier said than done, but we'll talk about what we need to do in order for that. So kind of just to get a quick show of hands here, um, most people are probably new to this. Um, I'll be looking at your accounts soon. But uh, does anyone currently have any followers? More than zero. Okay, everyone seems to have a, f a few followers. That's good. If not, that's okay. We'll, we'll, we'll make some in a moment. What's that? A bunch of school girls. A bunch of school girls? Yeah. Interesting. Are you posting stuff about school? Or are you just brand new to the site? Well, those might be, unfortunately, you might be running into spam bots. Because Twitter and all of social media also has spam bots. That these robots that just go around the web uh, trying to connect with accounts. Uh, I'll explain why they might do that in a moment. But um, I'm following 17. I've got 52 followers, so I'm following. Are any of you so far following any accounts? A few people. Okay, if not, we'll do it soon. This has to be a Twitter account for your company, correct? Yes. So if you've got your own personal account, um, you could use it for the class, but I recommend to make a brand new one just for like your website, your company. Since last week when you guys made your account, has anyone tweeted anything? Okay. So we'll talk about terminology and how to, how to work it and all of that, but uh, let's just take also a quick look at one of the most powerful but maybe uh, underrated features of Twitter. And this will fit in with your homework assignment, actually. You're going to have a homework assignment this week to use Twitter. Uh, and here's the, one of the big things you need to do. So you've got your, your Twitter uh, account. And on the top right, you've got this search box. This search box is to search inside of Twitter. You've got Google search, of course, or Yahoo search, or whatever. And that searches the whole world. This search here is only going to search inside of Twitter. It's going to show you tweets or photos or videos or sound inside of Twitter. It's going to let you search for people or companies or just about anything. So if you click on that search, um, type in one keyword about what your company is about. 
So I'm just using the example here of Instructor Victor, but I'm going to say this is sort of like my account for my business. Yeah, I've got Victor's art. Uh, I didn't make an account for that yet, but I'm just showing this as an example. So let's say this is my, uh, my Victor's art uh, Twitter account. So I want to look for uh, stuff related to art. So maybe I'm interested in um, pop art, the pop art movement. So as I start typing something, it'll give me suggestions. There's pop art, pop art commissions, pop art London, pop art music. It also gives me uh, suggestions for uh, accounts, Twitter accounts that are related to that. Either literally the words pop art are somehow in their name or they often tweet about that stuff. And then a search all. So I'm going to ignore all of these suggestions for the moment. Type your keyword. It can be more than one word, but just type in some sort of topic about what your, what your site is about and just press enter. Just press enter or click the little magnifying glass. Just press enter. And that'll give me a screen of um, Twitter search results. On the left, left side, it lets me filter it. Show me everything about pop art, or show me people related to that, or photos, or videos, news, or advanced search. We can look at advanced search later because that one's cool. We can actually target locations also. We can say, show me all tweets about this topic in the zip code 91913. So you can target the people in that area that really care about what you care. But for the moment, I'll just look at everything. And then it says on the right side, results for pop art. And notice it's kind of small at the top here, but we've got top and all. The default is top. It's telling me the top um, results of your keyword are shown first. And if I switch to all, this will start to show me the most recent results. I'm going to switch over to all. So whatever you searched, switch to all. Right there. The top tweet over here, unfortunately, is a promoted tweet. So yeah, it's free to create a Twitter account and to use Twitter, but you can pay to be visible by more people, even like a dollar. Red Bull probably paid a lot of dollars to be number one on the search result. Um, so I'm going to ignore them for the moment. But as I scroll down, I'm seeing results here. 51 seconds ago, Luxus Lifestyle tweeted something that I can't read about pop art. And then before that, two minutes ago, Luxus and Golf tweeted something else. And then out of this world, Luxus style, Paris Hilton. Uh, well, not the Paris Hilton, actually, be careful. And then Rihanna, but not the Rihanna. Uh, Schwarzenegger fans. And as I've been looking at these results, and as I've been talking, at the top it says there are five new results. Five new tweets have been made in the time I've been talking. So this is one of the things I really like about Twitter. It's like now. It's, it happens in real time. Um, personally, I like Twitter as a social network, and I also like it professionally. Facebook, I hate it personally, but I love it professionally. You can get a lot of uh, likes and attention and traction on Facebook professionally, but I hate it for friends and family because I don't want to connect with my friends and family on Facebook. My mom's on Facebook. Why would I want to be on Facebook? So, uh, Twitter. My mom's not on Twitter, so I'm fine. So, uh, Twitter, I like it for business, and I like it for personal. My favorite network for personal um, is Google+. I really like that one. I post stuff on Google+, people like it and comment, and it's really cool. Business-wise, it's not as powerful as it could be. So you see there's those three big ones. Facebook, Twitter, Google+, pros and cons. Question? What about Instagram? Instagram is really up and coming, and it's actually at the moment got more people using it than Twitter. 
So because if you didn't know, Facebook bought Instagram a couple of years ago for $1 billion. And so there's a lot of people on, on, on Facebook that never had Instagram, but now because it's connected, Facebook, Facebook is saying, hey, why don't you get Instagram? People are getting on Instagram. So that one's another one to get, to get into, especially if, you're, if what you want to put on social media or what your product really is is very visual, because Instagram is all about photos and video. So I do recommend Instagram. Uh, we might touch on it in class and such, but if not, I can give lecture videos and so forth. But the big ones, Facebook, Twitter, Google+, and then the fourth one, I would say it's a tie between Instagram and Pinterest. We'll see how much we can talk about all the networks, but anyway, as I've been talking more, I've got 10 new tweets here. So if I click there, 51 seconds ago, so I, apparently pop art is very popular in... Um, Germany? Because I'm so I'm seeing a lot of international tweets. So that's the thing also. Um, Twitter is international. So you could reach an audience in Mexico, in Canada, in Germany. So I personally like also Twitter uh, for the live tweeting aspect, meaning some event is happening and I can tweet along with everyone else that's also in that live event and that's a really powerful way to get followers. If you're tweeting about something that other people are tweeting about that you both care about, you might get followers. So we'll talk about that strategy in a moment, but the point of this strategy to get followers is you do a search for some topic and you see results. I'm just going to do something else here, web design. Just going to search web design and go to all. So um, people are tweeting a minute ago and so forth. They're tweeting links and pictures and videos and so forth. And the point of doing this is, okay, you're searching for something that you care about, that your company cares about, that you want to get followers about. One tactic then here is to do one of four possible interactions. So I'm looking at this person's tweet here. Warren Anthony wrote, the death of website design looms ever larger. And then a link. That might sound intriguing, so I want to click on that to read, well, what's this about the death of web design? So let's say I find content a tweet that I like. I have four things I can do. I have a reply, I have a retweet, and I have a favorite. The little star is the favorite, this little spinning arrow is the retweet, and the back arrow is a reply. So not that it's bad, but the lowest level of interaction you can do is favorite. I like that, so I'm going to favorite it, just like on um, Facebook, I like something, I can click like. That lets the person know that you liked it. So there's a favorite on Twitter. Now I say that's the lowest interaction that you can do because I, I like it and then I move on and I kind of maybe forget about it. There's other stuff to look at. It's not the worst thing you can do. Of course, the worst thing you can do is nothing. Don't interact with anything. Uh, so this person, Mara, said, I love it when my job requires painting with watercolors, web design. So the next level up of interaction that I can do is a retweet. If I click the retweet, what that does is it basically copies and pastes their tweet from me. I'm sharing it, like on Facebook. You see something you like on Facebook from one of your friends, you want some of your other friends to see it, you can share it. On Facebook, you share it on Twitter, it's called a retweet. So here it's saying, would you like to retweet this to your followers? Would you sort of, would you like to, on their behalf, share that to your followers? So I can cancel, I can retweet. I'll say, yeah, I'll go ahead. I'll retweet, I'll retweet that. So my 50 whatever followers might have seen that tweet. It'll say, uh, Instructor Victor retweeted this, and they'll see the tweet. That's the next level up of interaction, because that shows that person, you like that enough, that you wanted to share it. 
that content was so good, that photo was so good, that, that blog post was so good, that painting, that whatever was so good, you want to share it to your followers. The next level is the reply, because that takes more effort, doesn't it? I read this search specific categories in WordPress, so it looks like that's a tutorial. I can click on the link. It'll take me to their blog, search specific categories in WordPress. There's a tutorial. Okay, maybe it's pretty useful. So then I can take the time to then click the reply. That pops up here to let me reply and notice uh, their name is automatically added to the tweet. And when I reply, they will get a notification that I replied to them. This is a higher level of interaction because it takes time and effort here. I can, of course, just say, great post. But that's not very useful to them because that's just going to end the conversation there. The point of all of these interactions that I'm talking about is that I want those for my content also. I want to post a picture or a painting or a coupon or whatever, and I want people to like it, to favorite it, or to retweet it, or to reply to me. I want that. So in social media, oftentimes, you get what you give. So as you are social, that's the social in social media, if you are social, that'll often come back to you. In a sense, like karma, you're going to get that back. So if I were rep to reply to this person in a more constructive way, they might reply to me, they might reply to some of my other um, content, and then they might do the fourth interaction, which I'll talk about in a moment. This is the third one. So here I want to say something more like, um, that's exactly what I was looking for. And then uh, asking questions is good, because that keeps the conversation going. Um, what's your favorite aspect of WordPress. So yes, I am currently tweeting to a totally random person. I don't know this person at all. That's something that uh, is, is both good and scary about social media in that it's good that you can interact with so many people. You can get so many potential clients. But it's scary because you are going to be talking to strangers oftentimes. And yeah, there's the possibility that sometimes the strangers might be mean. You're trying to start up a positive conversation and they just reply to you, who are you? Blocked. And then you're blocked from their account. But I think that is a pretty low possibility. I've been on Twitter for a while and I really haven't gotten any, into any problems with people. So the possibility of getting followers and so forth outweighs the, the, the negative of possibly having a bad interaction. So I don't know this person, but I'm going to ask him a question tweet. And what happened on their end, on their Twitter account, they got a little notification up there that something happened. I've had one, uh, when, I lo when I logged in, I already had one. That doesn't mean that he replied to me already. Uh, it, he might reply to me, especially since it seems he's online. He's been, he was online 10 minutes ago. So the point of this is that now the favorite the retweet and the reply create a, uh, a notification. So those three people I just interacted with got a notification that said, Instructor Victor favorited your tweet. Instructor Victor retweeted you. Instructor Victor replied to your tweet. So then hopefully that causes them to reply to me or to favorite my content, or better yet, the fourth interaction, the one I really want, is I want them to go to my profile and click the follow button. I want followers. I want an audience, just like this guy has 1,025 followers. When he tweets something, potentially a thousand people could be seeing it. So think about if you were going to print a thousand flyers and put them out over the campus here for an event, you may have a thousand people see it or not, but if you printed 2,000 flyers, more people would see it. Here he's got a thousand followers that in theory could see the content uh, that he tweets, and he's got already 3,591 tweets. So I want to get a follow. 
So doing a search, this is going to be part of the homework. You're going to want to search for keywords. You're going to find people. You're going to find accounts related to your topic. Interact with them. Uh, but the requirement will be to follow a certain amount of accounts. You don't want to just randomly follow. And you could follow you know, Kim Kardashian if you want. I won't judge you. But you, you want to most likely follow accounts related to what your account is about. Because Kim's never going to reply to you. You're not that famous. So does this make sense? Why are we doing this search? We're trying to find possible followers. And we're going to do what I would call a little bit of phishing. We're going to be doing some favorites, favoriting. We're going to be some, doing some retweeting, some replying, and some following. And some of those fish will bite. And I will get back favorites, retweets, replies, or better yet, follows. You can always unfollow an account later. You know, uh, let me show you that briefly. If I go back to my home screen and I go to my following list, this is everyone that I'm following here. If I no longer want to follow that guy, I can click unfollow. If I don't want to follow this account anymore, you click unfollow. And that's it. They don't get the notification that you unfollowed them, so you're not going to hurt their feelings. You, they will get the notification when you follow them, but they don't get notified when you unfollow them. So it's a good strategy in the beginning to try to build an audience to follow some accounts, but depending on the account. Like uh, here in this account, I, I followed uh, Southwestern College, uh, and they're not following me. And I can tell that because when I look at their profile, it, there's an item here that will say following, if they're following you. I think it also says it up here. Um, oh, like right here, uh, Coach Cherry. Uh, I followed him, and it says it follows you. So any accounts that are following you are going to be marked that way. And you can easily follow or unfollow. So a strategy early on is to is to follow accounts related to stuff that you care about, so that uh, you might get some followbacks. Another is to do a search for topics you care about, and um, interact with those people talk about a few more strategies in just a moment, but I'll take any questions and then we'll do a break, but any questions so far? I have a comment. Uh -huh. So say for example, um, well at work we have this daily, daily information that is very important to garment manufacturers, which is one of the industries that we serve. Mm -hmm. So I've been thinking that that uh, this would be a good medium, you know, like tweet. Okay, well, this is the latest news on this, and all, all the the key persons of that industry eventually will find the um, the tweet. Call it the hashtag. The, the tweet or the hashtag, uh, possibly, uh, but if. The thing also about social media, like I said, you give what you get, but also um, you um, uh, popularity breeds popularity. So if you're already popular, if you've got a lot of followers, that'll help you get more followers. But if you're brand new and you don't have followers, you don't have very many followers that will help you spread the word. So what you're saying is eventually that could be useful to you, but in the beginning, if you've just got a pretty new account, you, I would not expect people to uh, start finding you right away until you start to do some of these techniques we're talking about. But it could work in the long run, what you're saying. All right, so let's take, uh, let's take our first break, and when we come back, we'll talk about other techniques to get followers. We'll do a 10-minute break. It's 6.32. We'll come back at 6.42, and we'll look at some other techniques here. <laughs>